Hello everybody and welcome to series 2 of the automation campaign in the new update with the lovely turbos and remodeled engines and everything. And yeah, uh, sad news, the old campaign series that we've had sadly corrupted so I do kind of have to start a new one. And yeah, so I've made a little poll on, well, on, on the channel and you guys have voted that we do a Swedish company based on turbos and innovative design and all that kind of jazz. So without further ado, let's have a look at the settings we've gone with. So this, and, uh, this game save will be based on engines. So we've got a lot of tech in engines, and some in chassis and some in drivetrain, as they do heavily link themselves. And for some reason, it's now 1.9, which is really annoying. So we're going to have to do that, because I would like a, at least a 2x multiplier score. So we've got 65 times engineering, because they're just very good at building engines. <laughs> so yeah, we've... We're going to start out on Headbase here, and life's going to be brilliant, so without further ado, let's get right into it. And here we are, this is going to be our new company, Vilulf, I don't know how to pronounce it, I will learn how to pronounce it this time instead of the Avanti and whatever, but that's besides the point. This company apparently has been given us to us through family connections, that's not how I envisioned it. I envisioned it to be a company that will have worked on producing engines for military vehicles, so tanks and SUVs and all that kind of stuff. So that's where I, that's what this company sort of based on. That's why it's got a high, um, that's why it's got high engineering in uh, a high tech level in, in in engine in the engine parts. So as this is Sweden, I hope I've said that, <laughs> and it's 1951. Uh, we're going to go with a family budget demograph, mainly being that we want this company, to, uh, we want this com we want to help rebuild Sweden, because Sweden will have been, will still be repairing from the Second World War, and they ju they they need every every little thing they can get. So we're going to make little cars for them. So we're going to go with this 2.3 meter long body. I think I quite like the look of it, and yeah. So we've got this body, I quite like it, and we're going to go with a steel panel monocoque, which sounds a bit weird, but believe me when I say we're going to go rear wheel drive, uh, rear engine, rear wheel drive is a given, but we're going to have a rear engine. So we have a front coil and a McPherson struts in the back. Now the, I know monocoques take hugely longer to manufacture to, to do the engineering times for, but we do have, I think, a 30% decrease on our first car, so I reckon we can get away with this for our first design on the car. So, wood cork would be nice to go double wishbone all around, but I don't think that would make sense. And it would be nice to go with stuff that doesn't rust as easily, like galvanized steel and aluminium and that kind of stuff, but we have to set limitations where we have to set them. So, we're gonna go with an inline spring. I know, not very military like. And we gotta somehow get this engine to fit. Oh, we gotta get someone. This is going to be very tight, so. That's rather annoying. It only just fits, but we wanna go with, I think, a 1.1 litre for the time being. I think that would make sense. Something small to then make a bigger engines out of this design. So we're gonna go with push rod, which is, yes. Once again, not very good, but we have to set limitations where there have to be some. And we're going to go with cast everything. Just a cheap little engine. And we're going to go with about 7.5 compression, I reckon. Reduce cam profile, lim springs and lifters as well. Turbos? We don't have turbos yet. But we're going to go with a standard low intake. I think the reason, the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanted to have the power down low. In this engine so we're gonna go also with regular fuel but we're gonna go we're gonna tune it for 89 octane which means that if there's any impurities in this in the fuel that the people are going to be putting in their cars the engine should be able to deal with it quite easily I reckon we go with about 4500 rpm uh, limit ignition timing will come down fuel mixture will be the just the optimal air to fuel ratio short cast we're going to reduce this to, I reckon, about 25 millimeters. Will be big enough for this exhaust. 
I'm gonna go with none and a baffled exhaust. And it's already looking really good actually. I haven't tested this, I haven't tested anything yet, but I do quite like the way this has turned out already. 28 kilowatts of power, which is uh, which is respectable for an engine of this size. We could probably squeeze a little bit more out if we increase the springs and lifters, but we don't want the power to be up high, we want it to be down here. So what can we do to make use of this extra little bit of oxygen that we have? There you go. This is already looking to be a really good engine, surprisingly, so that's what we're going to stick with for the time being. And I'll paint the engine and I'll tweak it afterwards once we've, once we've designed the car here. And let's actually have a little listen to it. I reckon it'll sound quite dreary, but we'll see. Oh, it's not very rev happy. As soon as it gets past about the 3,500 RPM mark, it just slows down. So it's good that we went for a low intake so we have all the all the torque we have it down here and then we have another little bit of a band we have a nice quite a quite a quite a nice flat torque curve right up here so that'll be quite nice for the drivability of this car so we're gonna go with this body like i said and oh this is really cool i forgot i forgot about this i haven't really played this update much but all the different paints and everything in this game are incredible so we're gonna go with a manual three speed. I reckon ah, 123 uh, miles per uh, kilometers now it can reach. So we'll do about 139. So we have a little bit of overdrive. We're gonna go with three speed, and I reckon we'll go for about this for spacing. I reckon that'll be alright. We'll see what the wheel spin says afterwards, but that's how I would optimally like to have it. We're gonna have hard, we're gonna go for hard long life tires. They are 13 inches, so we should be able to squeeze. Oh. I was about to say, we should be able to squeeze a little bit of width out of them, but 145s. It's still quite respectable for the time, I guess. And yeah, I mean, I was hoping for a little bit wider because the this car will be very oversteering. So we're going to have to play around with the rear width a little bit. So I reckon we're going to stick it with that for the time being. I know it looks very weird, but we'll see what we can do afterwards. So we're gonna we only have the single drums. <coughs> And we're going to go about 240 on the front, reduce the force a little bit. We're going to go about 220 on the back and reduce the force a little bit as well. We're going to go for more of a comfort pad as well. And I reckon that will be an okay start for the time being. We'll go with a rear bench in the, front, in the back, but two full size seats in the front with a standard. And I reckon we'll go for the AM radio. It's quite quite prestigious for a family budget car but for the time being it actually seems that we've got this demograph set in stone so we're gonna pin this demograph we're gonna have a quick look at what sort of designs like where we need to be for this car so comfort needs to come up higher drivability definitely needs to come up higher but I reckon that's because this car is very oversteering which I was right so let's have a little look here we're going to try and do something like this for the time being. We're going to increase the front sway bars, decrease the rear ones, and it seems that drivability has come up massively because we're not oversteering anymore, but still drivability is quite low. But practicality is very high for this car, and so is the reliability, and I reckon that's what we're going to sell this car on. Safety is also very good. We're prob Wait, have we got advanced safety? Or oh, we've got advanced safety. But we should probably distribute the weight a little bit more to the front I reckon that'll make the car a little bit more drivable but the engineering time and the uh, the production units comes up a lot higher as well so we're gonna go about 60 that's six months of engineering time I would optimize this car to be lighter but I reckon that'll also you know what 55 that'll be fine so let's have a look at the car so we've got quite decent fuel economy we have a very good safety for the time I reckon uh, weights is perfect because this engine isn't going to be this isn't a very powerful engine so this is perfectly fine uh, brake force on the rear is very high still so we're going to go with about 70% brake force and we'll just reduce the size from there I don't want the engines to be too squishy so I reckon that will be about fine the front brake force was actually judged quite nicely there so yeah I reckon this is a good start for the car for the time being and I'm going to give 
I'm going to really try and design this car. I want to make really nice looking cars for this company. I know the last company I sort of lost the touch a little bit in designing the car, but this this campaign we're going to properly give it a try. We're going to do interiors and everything, so I can't wait to see the final results of this car. So I'll see you guys when I'm done. Okay, so I guess I do have a little bit of explaining to do before we get into talking about the design of this car. And yes, I have been gone for quite a while. Now, I mean, it is mostly because life's just been really hard recently. I've had exams, I've had work's been extra hard, all that kind of stuff. It's just lots and lots of stuff to keep track of. And sadly, the channel had to be put aside for a little bit, but hopefully I should be back now. It shouldn't be... Life shouldn't be too tough anymore, I should be able to make some good videos for you guys, which I'm really looking forward to doing because I absolutely loved making videos for you guys, especially with the other with the old company, and I'm really sad that corrupted, but I mean this is all it's always good to have a new start on something, and I feel like this will be the start of something big for us. Now, end of that. <laughs> Talking about the design of this car now, um it was it was an interesting design. I really put a lot of effort thinking about the shape of the car, how I wanted it to be designed. I wanted it to be very aerodynamical and to get a good fuel efficiency, but I also wanted it to look good. And in the end, I settled for this rather weird-looking shape that I felt actually looked all right. And well, the front looks a bit plain, but because the engine is in the rear, I decided to put extra vents near the back of the car to simulate where the cooling would be for the car. And I feel like it turned out really nice and I've even made an interior for the car which I'm super excited to show you guys it took me a while to make <laughs> but I really had a lot of fun making it so I hope to make interiors for pretty much every single car coming in the future because once the once once the campaign finishes it will be look it will be amazing to look back on these cars and see how the company evolved and everything and I'm just really looking forward I'm just really looking forward to making the series for you guys I've been missing playing this game with for you guys and yeah I'm just really happy to be back so without further ado uh, I reckon I shall just leave you guys to watch the creation of this vehicle and I hope you have an amazing time watching hope you're all doing well and take care see you then
And so here we have it, our Villouf. I am hoping I pronounced that right, Upad. And basically, Upad means uh, upwards, which is what this car is sort of trying to achieve for Sweden. Now, honestly, I really dig the design. The front may be a bit boring, but there's no engine in the front, so there's no point having much cooling or anything. So I feel like that's all right. The back end, though, I really like how this turned out. I mean, it's a bit bland here, but just that, that lower section I feel like works really well. And as some of you may have already noticed, like I said I would do, I have made an interior. And this looks awesome! <laughs> I really like this. This is. I mean, I'm not the best at interiors. This is probably what, this is one of the first interiors I think I've ever made. I've made maybe one in the past, and that's it. But I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. This looks... I mean, this is probably the top of the range for this car. Like, the, like in terms of everything. I mean, the instrument, cl instrument cluster has stuff like oil temperature, water temperature, which would have been something very luxurious for the time, I'll put it that way. But I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And I like the colours, I, like, I just like everything about it. So, yeah, in the end... I can't really show you a competitiveness score, but we managed to get it up to be very competitive in uh, the family budget segment and also the commuter and passenger fleet segment, so they're really enjoying the look of this car. If we go to markets, the eco, uh, city ecos are also really enjoying this and other demographs are also really enjoying this, but it's, getting, it's got a bit of a sharehold, a bit of an interest from every market, so I'm happy with the way that this turned out. I managed to in the end, the engine is quite powerful. I think it's a little bit more powerful than we had it before. I managed to get it to have 14.6% fuel efficiency, which is all right in my opinion. And with 29 kilowatts power, that's about 40 horsepower. I feel like this is enough for a car of this size and of this weight because this car, funnily enough, well, crazily enough, weighs only 700 kilos. So I managed to get the weight down quite a fair bit on this. And second thing I did is I had a little bit of an experiment with the suspension setups and ended up going with uh, double McPherson struts. It didn't make sense to me to have a coil on the front because the front is a very important, like this is very important on a car like this to have a very stable base, uh, especially considering it's rear engine. So ended up going with double McPherson struts all around and yeah, honestly I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. So, I reckon I'll make one more variant of it with a smaller engine. And yeah, well we then put it up and for sale, and then we'll see how it goes. I've, cool, the cool thing that I like about this is you can already give it sort of a base idea of what you want the car to sell for. So say we want to sell it for 6,500, only 2,000 people will buy the car. That's a month though, so hopefully that will work quite nicely. I think it's because we only have a small factory and because our awareness is very low. So we'll boost our awareness before we, uh, before the car hits sale. So yeah, I'm going to make another one and I'm going to put a smaller engine into it. And yeah, I'll see you guys when I'm done. And here we have the second car and although the engine is very underpowered, I can show it to you quickly now. Uh, it only has just under 22 kilowatts of power. It is surprisingly fuel efficient i managed to get it to 16 percent fuel uh, engine efficiency so it only does it does 9.1 liters per 100 kilometers which is quite crazy and i feel like that also has to do with the fact that the car is very light and has and is very good uh, aerodynamically so yeah i reckon we go and put these cars up for sale now okay so let's try and get this car set up i have no idea how this has changed, but we are going to make the car more reliable. Um, we are also going to put more focus into learning about the car, I reckon. This is quite cool. I don't, I don't, I don't remember the, this being in the old version, but this is, I like this. So we'll do about 30% learning. We'll do 70% reliability. We'll do more manual work because we don't want to focus too much on automation for the time being we want to get these cars out and we, we just want to make them be good so engines let's focus on the factory for the engines oh ah um i have no idea how any of this works but 
We'll do the same thing. We'll make it about 70% reliability. We'll do 30 here and we'll go for, we'll go down to 45 for the tooling on this. And the engine will be done very quickly. So what we could do is we can make it go cheaper. A lot cheaper. We can focus more on learning. So say we'll have it done in a year. That is really good. So we'll have... In one year's time we'll have the new engine. And it'll be very cheap to actually... Uh, we'll have very cheap funding for it. So that would be brilliant. Let's focus on getting a factory up. Alright. So apparently we're doing the engine factory first. And we're going to have to do a what do you call it a small th uh, we have to do a three factory like a the biggest small factory because otherwise we're overworking our engine factory so we're not going to put any of this on just yet although it is very cheap i could just chuck that on right now and we'll be happy with that and uh no we'll we'll, we'll stick with this for the time being we're going to have a iron foundry we're going to have a qa testing we're going to have maintenance this factory will try it will be pushing us on quite a long way so Shift controls are the same for engine. Shift controls? That's interesting. Wages? Huh. This is, yeah, this is cool. I like this. So we'll, we'll, we'll pay about 80% worker wages, whatever 80% is. Or 85%. And then we'll go for a worker quality of, I guess, 70%? I don't know. <laughs> so have a look here so oh this is the factory stuff that we're used to so we're gonna have a qa threshold of say 86 and a half percent tooling will go up a little bit automation will go up a little bit and the factories are going to be very cheap this is brilliant so uh, look at this we have a little pie chart up here though so we have all the prices so, oh these engines are really cheap to make oh this is beautiful these engines are really cheap so I'm really happy with that. I was expecting the engine to be at least three times as much as what they are to produce. So we have the engine factory here. We've got this all set up. The engines are really cheap. So, wow. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that, but that's incredible. So let's sign off on that. Let's, ah, here's the factory management for the actual car factory. So let's have a look here. How many cars do we want to be producing? We want to Realistically, we want to be producing 3,000 cars a month of this new variant. We're going to want QA. Uh, do we have staff facilities? Provide staff training. Start with six months. What do you mean work of experience? Is that? Have I missed something? I mean, I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, we won't do a galvanization plant, although I could do a galvanization plant. And chuck that onto future cars that we're making. So we'll get rid of the staff facilities, I guess. Or do we want to keep them? Ah, this is very expensive to produce this factory. So total building costs only 113 million. So you know what? We can live with this. I was expecting this to be more for some reason. So actually it should have been more. Interesting. Oh well. So we'll have all of that good stuff on the shifts is now here so we'll have a minimum shift of 1.8 and a maximum shift of 2.5 uh we'll have a target shift of two we'll have a target shift of two so that, that should be all right we'll have i guess the same thing over here i don't know how, i don't know how any of this works but this is cool staff required hold on a minute there's actual staff now so i'm learning as much as you are right now um this is really cool actually, so 1,700 people will be working in this medium 2 factory. That's a lot of people. <laughs> I hope we have these people. But yeah, so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to have tiny bit quality, tiny bit tooling. QA threshold will be 65 and a half. That's brilliant and engine factories are overworked again. So possible profit. Hold on, there was a new pie chart there. I didn't even see the pie chart. So, uh, let's go back into the factory of this and see if we can work out how we can produce more of these engines. So, is there a way I can produce more engines like this? Uh, is there anything here that tells me how many I can be producing? So, if I automate it a little bit more, I should be able to produce the engines a little bit more. And then if I go into the factory, and then fiddle around with the factory, increasing automation and 
at all. It, oh, this isn't really helping all that much for me. Um, yeah, the engine factory will be a bit overworked. We can't really help that. So we've got as about 80%. This is ridiculous already. <laughs> uh, we can increase the QA threshold to about 90%, I reckon, on this because we have all of this. So we'll have very reliable engines. Um, yeah, so th this factory costs 50 million to make. The engine factory will be over overdone, but we can't really help that. So if we go into here and we go into this factory again, we can lower the amount of cars being produced here. So we'll reduce automation. Tooling quality will keep that up, but we're going to increase the QA threshold and hopefully that will mean that 91% QA threshold. That's not a lot of profit. Ah, this is cool. So if we do this, so one car costs 899 to produce. This is incredible. So we could be making huge profits on this car. I mean, we do have to pay, I think we have to pay workers, right? So we have workers wages here. Ah, if we reduce this, then not as many people want to produce. No, but no, stuff won't be made as quickly. And if we reduce, no, we can't really do that. I thought we could reduce the maximum shifts and that means less cars being produced, but apparently that doesn't make a difference. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do with, we're gonna have to make do with that. Factories are a little bit overworked, but we can live with it. It's not that bad, I hope. Depends on how many cars we're selling. So let's have a look at prof. What? This car is just making straight profit. Have I done something wrong here? Because this seems a little... <laughs> I'll be very honest with you. I was not expecting these cars to sell as well as they do. Um, we will do a price of 6,200 on the big engine one. And we'll have a price of 6,000 on the small engine one. This is ridiculous. I wasn't expecting this much profit immediately. Shift staff required. What? Interesting. So, I mean, we do have to pay staff, and apparently we're just making straight. I think something's wrong with these graphs here, because we are just making 108 million every single month, which seems kind of unrealistic. But we'll see what the car does when it's released. What is all this? This is this is all new. I love this. So engine and car take 18 months so it will be released in the middle of 1952 the rest of it will be produced up until then and everything should be handy dandy so let's complete the design um for company valuation and projected costs actually we could probably live with these costs if we deactivate the loan or at least take out maybe a 20 percent on this is that even worth it 40 million no, how much am I taking out? No, I think we're going to leave it for now. I hope we can live with the 300 million we've got as a starting budget. Because that will be the budget we've got left over from the war. Is what, how I'm thinking about it. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to market. Huh? Oh! Okay, that's quite cool. So, they've now got percentages and stuff here. So, we're going to do... Um weight because our cars are very light and apparently we're not paying for anything for weight uh, we will do um, I have no idea what to do really we'll do power distribution because our car is rear engine rear wheel drive and I guess we will do throttle response because our engines are very responsive and for some reason we're not actually paying anything for marketing which is kind of weird I was expecting at least to pay something for the marketing, but we'll do drivability. Oh, look at this. We are reaching markets now. We will do utility. Utility is something our car is a very good at. We'll do safety. Safety is a very important aspect of our car. We'll do comfort a little bit. We'll do some off-roading. Reliability. Our cars are very reliable, but this is how much we're paying per month. So this is already a bit too much for us. What is it? No, we've got millions to play with. Hold on. Sorry, I didn't even realize. So we could do this. We could do fuel economy. Fuel economy is very good in this car. Practicality. Our cars are very practical. Uh, yeah. I mean, prestige, we can do one on prestige. And sportiness, we'll just leave that. 
uh, we'll go into here, we'll do the same, oh, we won't do the same thing, so three, two, three. This is a lot more expensive than I expected it, so let's have one at weight, one on power distribution, and one on throttle response. So that's how much we're paying here, and then if we go to Fruinia, I reckon we could get away with some more marketing. And then we'll have a look here, so let's, this is how I preferably like to market it, that's 400,000 a month, I reckon we could, we could live with that, so weight or the weight uh power distribution and um what was the other one what was the other one? throttle response that's it oh we've actually paid for the throttle response on the side uh which one are we also paying for weight oh weight's very expensive apparently yeah so that looks all right we're making stable inroads on all of these markets which is quite fantastic really so hopefully we can sell cars to each of these segments in a decent in a decent way so is that i hope is i don't know whether that's a year oh that's change per year so that's a year by year growth so it's not a monthly growth so this is how much we are we're get, gaining our market share or market interest in each of these uh, segments every single year so i reckon we are ready to play this out so let's have a look we'll do it times five because we might as well and we are losing a little bit of money but that's just because it's a million a month we're sort of paying for our marketing so the car seems to be very affordable and very loved so hopefully we can make lots of profit on this car by selling lots of them so now the factories are coming into effect we're going to be losing a lot of money through the factories uh, now the engine factory is coming in that's also going to take a lot of money and yeah I mean we aren't we should be able we should, we'll be fine we'll be fine so what else have we got coming soon we've got basic AM radio we've got uh, fuel fuel injection system radial tires and that kind of stuff oh the cars released now and we've made seven million on the first on the first month of sale so that is brilliant actually so we've got we've made 20 million from the first car on the first month but the production costs and the marketing and everything else has added up and that means we've made seven million in profit that's really good i really like that so i can't wait to keep going with this because if we can build up a stable budget that means we can focus on making more engine higher engineered cars with more innovation and all that kind of cool stuff and then when we get to the turbo when we get to the turbo era of our company we'll have a lot of money to play with to make the turbos perfect so i can't wait for that so that's going to be the end i think of our first episode for the for the viluf motor engineering series <laughs> this is really cool we've sold lots of cars we made lots of profit so it has been a pleasure making this video for you guys and I'm very happy to be back making these videos for you. I hope you continue to watch them and I hope you enjoyed this one. And yeah, I hope you have an amazing day. Yeah, have a lovely day. Take care guys. Bye bye.